Hello friends, today we will talk in a topic of perineal ultrasound. The anatomy of the anal canal, the coronal image of the anal canal showing the rectum, the anal canal. The wall of the anal canal is composed of internal sphincter, the external sphincter. The external sphincter continues upward as a levator and a muscle. The space between the external and the internal sphincter is called intern sphincteric space. The space adjacent to the anal canal is called ischio anal fossa. The space above the levator and muscle is called supralevator space. The space which is located superficially around the anal opening is called perianal space. This is the sagittal image of the anal canal acquired with transvaginal probe. The transvaginal probe was kept on the perineum. This is the area of anal opening. This is the anorectal junction. This is the rectum. The anal canal is extended from anal opening to the anorectal junction. The linear hypoepic structure is the internal sphincter. Area of mixed equigenesis is the external anal sphincter. The lumen is covered with the anal mucosa. The potential space between the internal and the external space. External sphincter is called the intersphincteric space. Similarly, exit. The transvaginal probe was kept on the perineum just above the anal opening. Here we can see the ring like hypoechoic structure is nothing but the internal anal sphincter. Anal lumen is covered with anal mucosa. The area of mixed echogenicity is composed of external anal sphincter. Similarly, in axial section, the potential space between the internal and the external sphincter. That is, this space is called the intersphincteric space, which is filled with normally fatty tissue. The most common classification which is used is the Parkes classification. When the internal opening is located in the anal canal, the tract is traversing through both internal and external sphincter and opens into the external opening site. It is called transphincteric type of perineal fistula. So whenever we see a fistula, we have to look for the course of the tract, whether it is traversing through both of both these pinctures. Similarly, when the internal opening is located in the anal canal and the tract is traversing between the internal and external pincture and opens into the external opening site, it is called interspinctic type of perineal fistula. Similarly, when the internal opening is located in the anal canal and the tract is courses upwards and again downwards, and not coursing through any sphincters, it is called supraspinctric type of perineal fistula. When the internal opening is located above the anal canal, that is in the rectum or above, and the tract traverses downwards, not coursing through sphincters, and opens into the external opening site, it is called extraspinctric type of perineal fistula. This is the transpinctric type of perineal fistula. This is the Interspinctric type of perineal fistula. This is the supraspinctric type of perineal fistula, and this is the extraspinctric type of perineal fistula. Then we come to the what are the complex type of perineal fistula. The fistula which crosses more than 30 to 50 percent of the external anal fincture, external fingers. The anterior fistula in female, multiple tract, recurrent fistula. Prone disease and pre existing incontinence. These are classified as a complex fistula. Similarly, abscesses are classified according to the space where they are located. When the abscess is located in the intersphincteric space, it is called intersphincteric abscess. When the abscess is located in the ischioanal space, it is called ischioanal abscess. When the abscess is located in the supralevator space, it is called supralevator abscess. And when the abscess is located in the perianal space, it is called perianal abscess. Then how to do perianal ultrasound? First, we have to take the history from the patient. What are, what are his symptoms? Then we have to look for any clinical findings given by the clinician. The most common position are the lithotomy and left lateral position. These are the machines which I regularly use. Then we have to, the probes are the linear probes and the TVS probe. Most commonly, we have to use the linear probe first and then the transvaginal probe for the sagittal uh, images and the axial images. Then we have to screen the orientation of the anatomy. 
in sagittal and parasagittal planes then we have to keep the can to the, uh, keep the probe on external opening and we have to trace the reactor till its internal opening into the anal canal then we have to mention the internal opening in a clockwise position so here is the technique showing this is the left lateral position uh, the linear probe was kept on the anal opening and we have to screen the anal canal in a sagittal and parasagittal sections to look for any abscess present or not or when any fistula is present or not then for axial image we have to keep the probe on the perineum at 12 o'clock position just above the anal canal that is this is the anal opening we have kept the probe on the perineum just above the anal canal at about the 12 o'clock position and we have to clean the anal canal axially to look for any abscess present or not if present the internal opening of the uh, abscess with the anal canal then what we have to report we have to mention the primary tract the length of the tract the width of the tract location and its course we have to mention the relation of the tract to the sphincter complex that we have to classify the tract according to path classification then we have to mention the distance of the internal opening from skin in sagittal plane then uh, we have to mention the position of internal opening in axial plane that is in a clockwise position we have to mention the secondary fistulous tract that is the tract which is extending from primary tract we have to look for any associated abscess associated systemic pathology we have to draw a diagram of all above finding and we have to suggest histopathological correlation to rule out systemic causes then we come to the cases first case here we can, we have kept the linear probe on the anal opening and this is the sagittal image showing anal canal there is a single linear non branching tract arising from the anal canal and which is extending downwards and opening into the external opening side no evidence of any abscess or collection seen adjacent to this tract there is no evidence of any branching seen so this is the uh, first firstly first we have to screen the anal canal in a sagittal and parasagittal sections then we have to um, take axial sections of the anal canal the transvaginal probe was kept on the perineum just above the anal opening at about 10 o'clock position 12 o'clock position here we can see this is the anal canal this is the internal sphincter this is the external sphincter and the same tract is located at 6 o'clock position it is located between the internal and the external sphincter it has not crossed the external sphincter so this is the interspinctural type of perineal fistula no abscess in around this tract so next we may showing the same tract is communicating with the anal canal at about 5 o'clock position so in the next case here we can see the axial section of the anal canal showing the internal sphincter the external sphincter and a linear hypoechoic tract arising from anal canal at about 2 o'clock position extending laterally and opening into the external opening side few air foci are seen within this tract so this is the active tract here we can see the tract is coursing through the external sphincter it has crossed the interspinctural space and the external sphincter so this are, this is a transpinctural type of fistula no abscess seen around this tract next case here we can see the linear probe was kept on the external opening side here we can see a linear tract arising from anal canal and opening into the external opening side this is the anal canal so for in axial sections here we can see the tract is arising from anal canal at about 2 o'clock position this is the internal anal sphincter this is the area of external sphincter and the tract is opening and arising from anal canal at about 2 o'clock position coursing laterally and opening into the external opening side so this has also has a transpinctural course and 
mild the fat is being noted adjacent to this tract. So this is a case of transpinchiric type of PNNL fistula. Next case here a female patient came with perilabial swelling. So we have kept the linear probe kept from the perineum. We can see a hypoechoic collection located in the perineal above uh, uh, and above the anal canal. Uh, multiple debrinous material is seen within. So on further screening, the same collection is located just lateral to the vagina and the labia. It is located above the anal canal. So on further screening for this collection, there was a hypoechoic tract arising from anal canal from about 11 o'clock position coursing laterally and opening into the collection. So this is the axial image of the anal canal showing the internal anal sphincter, the anal mucosa, the external sphincter tracked at 11 o'clock position and the tract is communicating with the collection. So cause of the perilabial collection in this patient was the perianal or fistula. So next case, here the linear probe was kept on the anal opening. Here we can see the anal canal, a large collection with debrinous material seen in posterior ischial space. It is communicating with the anal canal in this location. So we have to mention the distance of this internal opening from the anal opening. So on further screening in axial sections, here we can see the anal canal. This is the internal sphincter. This is the anal mucosa. This is the external anal sphincter. The same collection was located in a posterior external fossa. We're communicating with anal canal at about a six o'clock position. Sometimes the patient came with post-operative recurrence as perianal fistula surgery has high chances of recurrence. So here the linear probe was kept on the external opening side. We can see a linear non-benching tract arising from external opening side coursing medially. Here the width of the tract is much larger as compared with previous cases as this is because of post-operative changes. So on further screening in axial sections, here we can see the axial image of the anal canal showing the mucosa, the internal sphincter, the external sphincter. Here we can see an echogenic area located between the internal sphincter at about 3 o'clock position, and the same collection was located just adjacent to this area, but no communication seen with this, uh, with this collection with the anal canal at this site. So this was a site of previous operation. So on further screening, there was another tract arising from anal canal at one o'clock position, coursing laterally and downward and communicating with the collection and giving rise to the external opening site. So cause of the recurrence in this patient was a new tract was developed and giving rise to recurrence. 